I'm going to hit the ground right now in some deliverance. And it's not even going to be on the subject matter that I'm going to teach on. Okay. But I feel that the Lord has led me this morning to take us here first to tear down, uproot, dismantle, rebuild, and replant some things before we ever go into the subject matter. And I want to explain that to you in Jeremiah chapter one. And an interesting thing is back in the early days, and some have heard my wife and I's testimony. Um, some may have not. And, um, but the Lord brought her to me and me to her as sort of the widow for Elijah and Elijah for the widow, but he brought, uh, which he always does, by the way, any minister sowing is also receiving. Okay. That's, that's the truth. If you don't know any teacher that's worth listening to can also be taught if they can't. They don't need to be your teacher. Hear me? But the Lord had brought her to me, and, and it was in the early days of that, and she was going through uh, her, and he taught me how to rehab her, honestly, and what to do and instructions to give, and all, all that. He, it was, he, he, he loved her, and he wanted her to be everything she could be. How many are grateful that he put his eye on you? Yeah. All right. But so she'd grown up in church, but there was lots of parts of the word she probably didn't know. And we were going to do a, a, a deliverance. She was there with me, and I was going to take people through some prayers uh, back then. And, and truthfully, at that part of our lives, we probably knew more about breaking contracts uh, with, with the enemy, such as which we do every time we repent. But when we repent, when we confess our sin, we're breaking the legal rights of the enemy. We're coming out of agreement with him. So we would take somebody through breaking, you know, forgiving everybody, number one, because if you don't do that, uh, you're stuck. <laughs> Honestly. You got to be willing to forgive. Now. We could go on, and I could teach you an hour about the process. Because just because you say you're forgiven doesn't mean you're healed. We're going to deal with that in a minute, okay? But it's the very first part of repentance. Confess your sin, but it's deciding that you agree with God and your old thought pattern that might have had something against somebody isn't okay. I got to go this way, all right? So, so you begin that. So we would do repentance. We would do breaking of soul ties, and then we had a list of generational curses biblically defined that we would take people through breaking. But right in the middle of that, she, it, it, or probably at the beginning when we were starting, actually, she says, the Lord told me to read this. And it was Jeremiah chapter one. And the Lord is talking to Jeremiah, who was a young man, by the way, at this point. And he's saying, I've appointed you a prophet to the nations to tear down, to uproot, to dismantle, to rebuild, and to replant. And immediately, it was like that spoke this much. And it's about deliverance. And he was telling him he was literally a prophet to the nations to do all that. And yes, he was. But the how many know the word of God is alive? And so it meant exactly what it meant back then, but it also was something that brought revelation and it was painting a picture of what deliverance is all about. So deliverance is that you've got strongholds, you've got wrong thinking, you've got wrong attitudes, you've got wrong behavior. How many know? Everybody honest here? How many know that some of your behaviors is better than it used to be? And it can get better. But I mean, not, listen to me. If, if we don't deal with those negative thought patterns, if we don't tear them down, and the first beginning of tearing them down is saying, I don't agree. I don't agree with this. I agree with God. Because you've been agreeing with the world and the devil and your flesh. 
all of us. I said, well, if I say you, I've, I'm, you know, I've been there. Okay. It's me too. Okay. So, so our, and you need to know that you got three enemies in general as a generalization and, and they are the flesh, what you're born with, what the fall of Adam and Eve did to us. Okay what it brought us into, what we're born into, we're born into inequity. The flesh. The part about the little baby that lies to you that's never been taught about a lie, but they lie and you can see they know it's wrong. Or the little baby that goes up to the other baby and slaps a rattle and says, my. Nobody teaches them that. They can be taught wrong to do many things wrong, but it's already within us to do the wrong things. The flesh. The supernatural entities that we do battle with, in a nutshell, the devil, the fallen angels, all the demons. We do battle. And then the world system that they have formed. Because there's a world system, a political system, economic system, financial system, educational system, entertainment system. It don't agree with God, none of it. Now, we're in the world, not of the world, all right? I may have to participate in the financial system. I don't have to participate in any of the entertainment system that's not for me, right? There's some things I can make choices on. Okay, uh, to get away from, if I did a teaching today, and, and I started to, but the Lord led me a different direction, but if I did it on witchcraft, and I showed you all the symbolism, okay, I'm going to tell you it's on your can of beans, it's on a on, on Pepsi, it's on a Sprite, it's a, Sprite means demon, by the way, a little Sprite's a little demon, if you know. Okay, they are. And they got yin-yang symbols, both Pepsi and Sprite. All right? Now, am I telling you not to drink Sprite? No. God tells you not to. Don't. Uh, you know, uh, Starbucks coffee. I like coffee. I, li I do like coffee. Okay? I do. I, you know, and there have been times in my past that I would succumb to my flesh when I couldn't find any place handy, and I'd go drink a stinking Starbucks. I won't anymore. And you know why? Look, so they do got a little, they, they have a siren, a, a goddess who, 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 what she did kind of like the Medusa's was kind of like her, but a siren, but this siren was still attractive and they would, they would uh, be on the shores of the sea and call out to the sailors. And when the sailors would go that way through their lust, then they would crash into the islands and drown. Well, it's like a mermaid, but this is a siren, S-I-R-E-N. It's like a siren, a form of one. And so and she's got the split tail. She's a mixture goddess, basically. But And, and that's bad enough. But then you have, the, look, like I said, uh, many, 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 many things that we have to be a part of or where we're going to get things most all of these companies are tainted okay but back to starbucks they openly say they hate everything we stand for starbucks the owner said he, they they're for abortion they hate us that are against abortion they are for gay marriage. They hate those of us that would be against it. They're for perversion. They're for any, they're against the things of God. So if they openly say that, why do I want to support them? You know, now some of these others may feel the same way, but they're smart enough not to openly say it. Okay. And there's so many things out there that it, if you tried to get away from everything, you're going to have to go be a farmer somewhere and grow your own food and get out of the world. Just get it. You just get out and get off the grid and get off the electric. You're going to have to go everywhere. If you keep, if you think you're going to stop receiving things from evil sources, but the things you know about, 
the things that come to your attention. Right now, if you're going to live in our country, and in, you know, you're going to have to use a dollar bill or a $50 bill or a $100 bill. And on that dollar bill, you got, you got the all-seeing eye symbol. You, you've got the Federal Reserve, which is not even the, uh, a government entity that prints the money. It's all a demonic system. But if you're going to buy a can of beans and survive, you're going to have to use it. But that and and you can use it as a tool for good. There were people gave in the offering. Well, that'll be used for good. You send money to help missionaries, it's used for good. You help somebody with the love of God, it's used for good. Okay. One day there's a system coming that'll replace all that. Glory to God. Amen. But we can walk spiritually here and not be of the world, even if we're in it. Amen? So we're going to go on a subject matter that's different than this one, but I felt like that we need to undo witchcraft before we ever start. And this world is full of it, and people operate in it. And and one of the, and even at those that don't practice witchcraft, if we're in rebellion to go against what we're supposed to do, then the rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Okay, and um, I would have been in rebellion if I hadn't have taken us here because I knew from the Lord this is where we're supposed to go. So, in effect, what we're going to do is say some prayers that clear the path before we ever go into the body of the teaching, okay? And I'm gonna ask you to repeat after me. Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bind and break the power of all witchcraft, all curses, spells, and powers through the blood of the Lamb. We destroy the works, of every witch, every witch coven, Satanist leader, every group, warlocks, wizards, sorcerers, and all powers of darkness. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, we break all their powers, including the influences of witchcraft, evil powers, spells, hexes, vexes, Voodoo. Now, I want to tell you something. Never be afraid of witchcraft. You hear me? Don't be afraid of people and the demons that they sin. We have power, but we also don't want to perish for ignorance. My people perish and are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So, a lack, and I'm, I'm going to tell you something else. After we get through praying here, I'm going to cast out some demons. I'm going to call them out. And I, and I want people online, if we're still online, and people that would hear this, I've never seen a person that denied the possibility that they could have a demon get rid of that one. Hear me? There are people that think they're already done, that they, but listen, we don't know what we inherited. We don't know what's been sent, okay? And if, you're, if you have walked in a non-defensive position or, or got outside the covering of the blood of the land for your own sin and stuff, and they send witchcraft against you, those spirits come in. And if you judge the witch as if you could never do what they do, you might start operating as a witch in, in rebellion and in intimidation and in all of those things. And if you judge a person operating in Jezebel and you judge them in the wrong manner and without being an intercessor, you can start acting like Jezebel in rebellion, resentment of authority. I mean, we, there's good authority and then there's controlling authority. Everything has to be tested. But I, I'm just telling you that I've, I've seen people here, I've seen people in the ministry, and, and, and seen people that I've worked with in personal ministry that when we start dealing in an area, there nothing's happening. It's because now we're not imparting things to people. We're not placing them on people. But if a person is closed-minded, oh, that can't be me. 
And people say that, that the enemy can't read your mind. Well, I'm not sold on that. I don't see that in the Bible. I don't see it in the Bible anywhere. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you can, I mean, they can look and they can see everything, but I'm going to tell you this demonic being, they have technology that can read your mind and respond to it. Who gave them the technology? The demons. So it's important what you think about. Keep your mind stayed on the Lord. Now, as a man thinketh, so he is. So if you dwell on negative things, negative things are going to happen. If you dwell on worrying about, see, I'm taking care of that. We are doing as the Lord said, and we're going to, we're stippering and plundering anything the enemy might have done, but not out of fear of what he's doing. We're just clearing the atmosphere so that the Lord can do his work. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. So through the blood of Jesus Christ, we break all their powers, including the influences of witchcraft, evil powers, spells, hexes, vexes, voodoo, hoodoo, roots, potions, white witchcraft, and any other such thing coming against us in Jesus' name. Through the blood of Jesus Christ, we also bind up and destroy all their spirit guides demonic helpers we break the shields of these workers of evil stripping them of all of their evil power and influence in the name of jesus christ by the blood of the lamb we now seal up their powers so they cannot use them on anyone we command the iniquity of the enemy to return upon his own head he loves cursing let cursing return to him in the name of jesus christ i come against the prince ruling spirit and all spirit gods lord i repent confess my own sin my own witchcraft everything i've done in agreement with darkness Rebellion. Rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. Manipulation, intimidation, bullying, coercion, soulish wrestling with people. And I confess that of my ancestors and all true witchcraft, all practicing witchcraft, all ritual blood rituals, body fluid rituals, word rituals, elemental rituals. I break these curses. Now in the name of Jesus, I paralyze those spirits. I silence them. I forbid them from influencing, strengthening the covens, the witchcraft practitioners. We destroy your works, spirit of hate, spirit of bitterness, spirit of murder, spirit of envy, spirit of jealousy, spirit of wizardry, sorcery, and all your co-spirits, your works, your powers, your influences. Let them be destroyed in the name of Jesus. I paralyze the demonic powers. You will not use witchcraft. Witch spirits, human spirits, our soul travel any longer against me and anyone in this congregation, the leadership, its family members. In the name of Jesus, I come against the spirit of blindness, spirits of bondage, heaviness, fear, and hate. Lord, your word commands that we love our enemies, but hate the demons. We pray that you'll open the eyes of all practitioners of witchcraft that deliberately practice the arts against your people so they can see the glory of Jesus. Open their hearts 
that they can hear your voice, break the yokes in their lives and give them liberty in their souls that they may be free to repent. Show them every evil work, every evil deed that they're guilty of. And Lord Jesus, convict their hearts under repentance. Lord, bring these souls out of darkness. Bring mine out of darkness. Do you know you can be saved and have parts of your soul in darkness? That's why we do deliver. Save these deceived souls so you have the glory. Satan, I silence you in the name of Jesus, binding your interference. You will not interfere with these souls. And they will have their own free will choice so they can make up their own minds to repent. They will do so without your interference. Lord, I ask you to release warring angels to wage war against these demonic activities and send your ministering spirits to minister to the souls in the name of Jesus. Say in Jesus' name, I break the following protective devices, sealing and shielding, shielding demonic curses and evil powers in each of us as believers at, for this congregation, for the leadership here. I break all ancestral curses, direct curses, indirect curses, self-inflicted curses, curses on living and non-living entities. I break every curse of negotiation and compromise. I break them in Jesus' name. I break all protective devices over the curses. I break all satanic seals, satanic protective shields, satanic prayers, ties with the evil past. I break ties with living and non-living entities. I command all these principalities to come up tied together. I break ties between these spirits, cut any supports in Jesus' name. I break all demonic oppressions, satanic oppressions, evil oppressions, and I break the curse of oppression. I break all satanic blood covenants, blood sacrifices, satanic declarations, satanic dedications, satanic assignments, satanic schemes, satanic designs, and satanic wishes. I break the control spirits of evil power and evil strength. I remind all principalities that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We do not fight in the flesh and we do not war after the flesh. We now exercise power and authority and come against you by the blood of the lamb in the name of Jesus, the authority of the believer, the unity of our spirits, the unity of our spirits. We're in agreement. The word of God in Jesus name. I bind all strong men, commanders of legions, ruler demons, lesser demons, servant demons, their underlings, all cohorts, doorkeepers, gatekeepers, and her that are harassing the members of the body of Christ present and keeping them in bondage. I bind your powers. I command you foul spirits of witchcraft, the occult, all demonic forces to line up in rank and file and start leaving in orderly fashion without renting 
are tearing any member of the body here. I take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and we cut and sever every spirit in the families that are named that are from Satan and from one another so you can't hang on to each other for help, for comfort, and support. So we're separating the demons there from supporting each other. Okay? Say, I agree. If you agree, we cut you asunder from every area of our minds, our souls, our emotions, from our bodies, from our five senses, from the muscles, ligaments, tendons, nerves, sinus, tissues, and the vertebrae, the disc, and every portion of the, sin of the uh, spinal cord, from every organ and limb. I wash you and purge you from every part of the body, my body, and the body of Christ here with the blood of Jesus. We sever between the conscious, unconscious, and subconscious mind so the things of the past can be released. We bind and stir up these demons through the power of God. Get out of the mind, soul, and body, and we throw weakness in your ranks. We command you to come out, come out of the darkness, into the light, the light of the Lord. And we forbid you to use trickery, deceit, and mischief. I bind all demonic spirits directly to the authority of Jesus, who is the Christ and his divine judgment. We command you to leave you principles along with your memories, roots, scars, works, nest, and habits in the name of Jesus. Now I'm going to start commanding things to leave by name. Accuser the brethren go. Deceitful, fierce, and cruel go. Tormentor go. Fowler go. Liar go. Father of lies go. Wicked and without conscience. Sower of discord. Murderer, destroyer. Thief and devourer. One without principle. First sinner. First rebel. All kings over the children of pride go. Cowardly one. Our enemy. Go, 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 go. Oppressor go. Adversary go. Corrupter of minds. Bezelbub. Lucifer. Even the demons that took on these names. Go, go. Go, Lucifer, Bilal, Abaddon, Apollyon, Prince of Darkness, Ruler of Darkness, in the name of Jesus. Devils, devils, get out in the name of Jesus. Come on, dragon go, serpent go, roaring lion, antichrist, beast, false prophet. Get out in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Come on, go, 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 in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Every, every spirit that would bind us from further deliverance, hinder us in any way, shape, or form, we break your power. Take a deep breath and let them go if you would. Come on, go, go. Everything sent from without, everything from within. In the name of Jesus, go, 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 go. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Say, Lord, I forgive everyone. I'm asking you to show me any place I'm entangled from any of my works, from anything sin against me. I forgive them. Say, Lord, I renounce all false prophecy, every word that's been spoken over me. That's not from you, even if it was said that it was you saying it. I break that in Jesus' name. Take a deep breath. Come on, let them go.
every foreign soul go where it belongs in the name of Jesus, all false prophecies, all false prophetic word, all witchcraft prophecies in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, go, 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 go in the name of Jesus. Come on, let them go in the name of Jesus. Come on, come on, come on. All curses, curses from people called Christian. I break your power in the name of Jesus. Come on, let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Come on. Curses from well-meaning people that spoke evil. I break your power in the name of Jesus. Psychic curses. Psychic prayer spirits. Come on. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Everybody who will say, Lord. Lord. I forbid the enemy. From, for, from convincing me or making me think things don't apply to me if they do. Amen? I mean, there are things that are so hidden and so deep that, that are so far back in your bloodline, you may never have thought about it. Your dad didn't do it. Your mom didn't do it. And you can go on down line, but it's there. So if your position is not this, if it's in me and it doesn't reflect the glory of God, I don't want it. Amen. And I don't care what it is. Amen. So everybody say, Lord, Lord. if it's in me <laughs> and it's not of you, I want it gone now. Now take a deep breath. Come on, let him go. All that witchcraft, even from the entertainment, from the books, from the child fairy tales. In the name of Jesus, elves, gnomes, fairies, trolls, in the name of Jesus, come on, get out in the name of Jesus, come on, elves, gnomes, fairies, trolls, supernatural beings, come on, get out in the name of Jesus, go, go, all the fey people, get out in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, well, it doesn't hurt to watch that, yes, it does, it doesn't hurt to read, yes, it does. If it's supernatural and it's not directly related to the most high God, it's evil. And it's a trap. And it's meant to destroy you. And the reason you have stories of fairies and trolls and gnomes, one of the things I could have taught on today was supernatural creatures. Because the reason all those stories are there is because these people way back in the day before the Industrial Revolution were constantly in contact with spirit beings. And they were constantly dealing and appeasing little demons, big demons, this kind of demon, that kind of demon. They were constantly doing that so that things were manifest here on the earth. Now they're hiding. Soon to come forth but they're still residing in people. So if you want to play and your ancestors uh, read Grimm's fairy tales or that was read to you as a child and your parents were ignorant, didn't know what they're doing more than likely, but if that happened, then you would have collected those demons. So come on out now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Come on out of there. All of those spirits from the Disney shows in the name of Jesus. Come on, Wicked Witch of the West, Wicked Witch of the East. Come on, all Oz spirits in the name of Jesus. Get out and all like spirits. Come out of God's people in Jesus' name. Yes. They're all there. Yeah. 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 And in in uh, many respects it's when you're the minister it's confirmation you're hitting the right track when you see that manifestation and for you to see that was for you to give testimony today. That's some of them just yawn and come out but what she saw was those things manifesting as those characters. And that was probably the depth of the fantasy that person lived in. Yeah. Say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I forgive anyone.
that ever said the booger man was going to get me by any name. And I command those spirits to go and all the fear, all the fear. that came with that. Go in Jesus' name. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out. Get out in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And I sever my soul from the fear of demons that came through those words. I have authority through Christ Jesus over demons. I don't have to be scared of them. My protection is from the Most High God. Now come out of them in the name of Jesus. All fear of demons, fear of the devil, fear of Satan, fear of Lucifer, fear of the supernatural. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. See, there's a place we all we're delivering. We do deliverance here, but I promise you, in my everyday life, I'm not thinking about demons. <laughs> I'm walking around thinking about God, talking to God. I deal with demons. We deal with darkness when it shows its head. Does that mean I don't pray protection in the morning? Thank you, Lord. We bind you, Satan. Huh? Do we? Yes, because we're counting on him and we're acknowledging God as the one that protects us. And then we're executing authority with our words against the darkness. But then as things happen and come up, and sometimes things come up, listen, sometimes you see things and you think it's just the enemy picking on you, and, and, but once you have closed the doors that you need to close, once that you're living a repentant lifestyle, once you've told God you're sorry and you're real about it, now maybe you're seeing it because God wants you to deal with it for everyone's sake. You get that? So, you know, maybe they've been destroying people. Maybe those operating in the occult have been destroying people everywhere they go. And God put them next door to you so the destruction can stop. You hear me? For they, so they might have an opportunity to get saved or they're going to be judged by God. He would rather save them but he has to have somebody to work with to cut on there. He has to have a human. He has to have one of his children rise up and speak against darkness. Amen. All right. He'd rather save them, but he will judge. He absolutely, God is a judge. He said, he's a Derek Prince. Sometimes one of his teachings, he said, people know Jesus is the savior. And they know he's a wonderful savior. But what they don't realize is he's an equally proficient judge. Okay? It's not a game. Does, it, does the father actually want to judge us according to us? No. <laughs> That's why he sent one to stand between us and him so he could judge what Jesus has done and give us favor. But if I'm going to be in rebellion and if i'm going to do things i want to do and if i'm going to run out then i'm going to come under judgment hmm? even if i belong to the lord so it's best for me to judge me and run with me to jesus and say forgive me lord and then i get his grace to prosper in my mind my body and provision amen if the, evil's, if the enemy's got in your mind in any way, shape, or form blaming God for anything, you're not in a good place. I promise you. God is just, and he's good, and he's merciful, and he's kind. you got to know his character. So, Father, I pray for the ministry now, and I pray that you're going to do what only you can do as we go through this. And that as, see, deliverance, I'm speaking again to you now. Deliverance is part of it. Healing is another part. So we can cast out the demons. See, so see, you can say, I forgive somebody. We can cast out demons of unforgiveness and bitterness and even brokenhearted demons, right? But you got to have your heart healed. 
and you got to be open to have your heart healed. And oftentimes, even people that have committed to forgiving still can't let it go because their heart's not healed. And so some of it is because it hasn't been completely let go. But we're going to believe God today for not only a complete releasing of all hurts and wounds to God and all charges against everyone to God, to the Lord, giving it to him. The mama says, put them in his court. But listen, if you put somebody in his court going, whack them, God, it's not the proper way. <laughs> you ain't put them in his court. You're putting them his, in his court with a charge attached to it. Uh -huh. Put them into his court. Let him judge it. Huh? Be grateful that uh, he judged you according to Jesus and not according to ourselves. So we're going to call this, he heals the brokenhearted. Jesus in Luke 4, 18, 19 quotes Isaiah, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Say, Lord, heal me and I'll be healed. Deliver me and I'll be delivered. Give me sight and I'll see. I give you permission to heal my bruises, to set me at liberty. Proverbs 15, 13 says, A merry heart make a cheerful countenance, but the sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. Say, Lord, I give you permission to take away my sorrow and to repair my spirit where it's been broken. The Lord Jesus came to do all of the falling, heal the brokenhearted, bring deliverance to the captive, heal the sick. The heart is the center, not only of spiritual activity, but also the operations of human life. Heart and soul are often used interchangeably. A wounded spirit or a broken heart is one that is hurting. You know, some people have physical heart problems because they have spiritual heart problems. And a broken heart begets a broken heart. A wounded, some, are, some have heart problems because they ate bad too long. Poor eating for too long and your body begins to fall apart. Food. So if you're eating, if there's food that's bad for you and you're eating it, well, then your machine ain't going to work as good. And I'm not pointing a finger at anybody because I haven't mastered perfect eating yet. So just stating the truth. A wounded spirit or a broken heart is one that's hurting. A person with a wounded spirit lives in inner misery that focuses regularly on his emotional pain and cannot fully receive cleansing and wholeness. So what keeps a broken heart? Unforgiveness and bitterness are the glue that holds pain in your heart. Forgiveness is one of the major steps to bring healing and peace to a person. When you feel like you're unloved and neglected, when a parent or spouse neglects or abandons physically or emotionally, then the person feels unloved. With a broken heart, there is a breach. There is a fear that blocks you from experiencing the love of God to keep you from loving yourself and to loving others properly without fear of rejection. The broken hardened person is wide open to the attack of the enemy, both in their soul and in their body. And Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbors yourself. All of the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Love is the principal thing. You have to be able to receive love to give it. And ultimately, all love that's given, honestly, that is not from the Father, is is a shallow love it has it won't have depth it won't stay in trouble okay and so the the marriage commitment it, it, it in 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 a marriage commitment is one every, i don't know there's some that say they have perfect marriages well i'm praising god for them 
but but husbands and wives mo most people have to choose the other one when they're not being very lovable and choose to stay it's a commitment love is it's an unconditional deal it means uh, i made covenant with you and even when you're not acting right i'm not running away okay there are some circumstances where some people need to be separated that's the truth and but but it's not god's perfect will amen but most of our problems in our rejection in our rebellion in all of it boils down to i'm not the love of the father is not coming in if the love of our heavenly father is in a person they'll be able to fulfill their biblical marital roles they'll be able to fulfill good relational roles they'll be able to be at peace with whoever will be at peace with them and the Bible says, if it possible, be at peace with all men. But it says, if possible. Because there are some people that, you know, you can be at peace with them, but they're not going to be at peace with you. But your world can't be shattered by someone who won't be at peace with you. And if it is, there's something wrong here in the heart. You're still hurt. See, and there's a place where some people that are brokenhearted will just choose numbness. So some numbness is by medicine, drugs, alcohol. Some That's a numbness. Others are stoicism. And others, even if um, they're emotional beings, they hide behind a wall of, I don't care. I don't care what they do. Well, if you're saying, I don't care what they do, you do care. Inflection tells a lot. Our need for love is the most basic need we have. All other needs are satisfied when we feel love. When this basic need is unmet, it forms a strong foundation for a deep wounded spirit. In other words, traumatic events in our lives will affect us more severely when we have unmet needs. Our ability to cope with stressful situations are then damaged and distorted. How many know that's a problem? Because how many know that no matter what happens, no matter how good you love the Lord, no matter what you're doing, you're going to run into situations that can produce stress if you let it. Testings. We're in a broken world. How many know this place is messed up? Huh? How many are glad there's a king that's coming? Huh? In the meantime, he has equipped us to be able to walk through life and handle. I don't have to be in my neighbor's whirlwind. Hear me? I don't have to be in anybody's whirlwind. Say, Lord, take me out of the whirlwind. Forgive me for creating whirlwind. Satan wants to rob you from relationships with God, yourselves, and others. He is the executor of the curse. He is a liar. If he can get you to believe his lies, you become a prisoner of ne negative thoughts that are sent by Satan. So what does a broken heart look like? When your spirit is damaged and wounded, your ability to relate normally to others, to yourselves, and to God is hampered, as well as the ability to trust others and God can be broken. There are some people you can't trust, and their actions have proved it. And for some of those, that have, if you've been one that's broken people's trust, don't be mad if it takes a while to reestablish the trust. If they're walking in the spirit, well, then they they will work with you and love you. But they got a right to question you based on your past behavior without beating you down. Do you understand that? There are guys in jail. I mean, I've seen ministers in jail tell them, when you get out of here and you got saved in here, you're a new creature in Christ Jesus, but they don't know you back home. They don't know who you are. But if you can't trust anybody, brother talked about Medusa and the man hater. There's another word he, and, he, and I can't remember the word he used, but there's another word that's like it, but it's just a woman. We call it man hater and woman hater. 
And so men don't trust women because women hurt them and women don't trust men because men hurt them. And we got Adam and Eve and man hater and woman hater that's come all the way down the line the whole way here, all the way to now. And then there are women that don't trust women because some woman took some woman's man or their mother was not trustable. Do you hear me? Yes, ma'am. So, see, the, the thing is, thank you, ma'am. Listen to me. If I have this wall of mistrust out here, I'm not going to let anybody close to me. That doesn't mean everybody is who you're to share the intimate details of your life with. But if I have this wall up here that says, I, I, I remember having that friend and she betrayed me, or I remember that guy and he threw me under the bus, blah, blah, blah. And I, and I have nobody that I'm going to be able to give love to and receive love, even brotherly, sisterly, none of that. And so therefore God's love is, even though it's coming to me, it's stuck. It's like a stagnant pool. And when you get the reality and your heart gets healed, you're willing to love people even if you know you're going to get hurt. Because at some point, everybody's going to disappoint you. Huh? At some point. At some point, sometimes it's just two people don't think the same. I got news for you. Look around. You'll never find another soul that thinks exactly like you. Because nobody is you. So we got to give each other liberty and give people liberty to think a little different. That doesn't mean we agree with our sin or anybody else's. I tell people, listen, I, if you don't, if you, you got to, there's one thing you should hate and it's sin. You need to, if you don't hate sin, you need to ask God to help you hate sin. But there has to be a separation between sin and yourself. You can't hate, you need to hate your sin deeply while you still love you. You need to hate other sins deeply while you still love them. And the reason you need to hate sin is because your daddy, if you're born again, hates sin. And he hates what it does to people. And we should hate what it does. If I sin and it's worked through me and I hurt another human being, I should hate that. You hear me? These six things the Lord hates, yea, seven. We should hate it, but we love people because people are valuable because there was a king that came and died on a cross that said what everyone's value is. Say, Lord, help me to hate what I need to hate and to love who I need to love and what I need to love. You'll never overcome the enemy or a broken heart hating yourself. Hating you because you failed. I got news for you. Nobody has lived perfect except one. Nobody. I see there are, there are religious dominations that, 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 that literally say, oh, I don't sin anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm not a sinner. Well, not, you may not practice sin, but you can still sin. I don't practice sin. If you're practicing sin, that means that you're just saying that I'm just going to do this and I don't care. I'm just going to do what I want to. It's who I am. That's practicing sin. I'm going to smoke dope. God sent the green herbs. Every good herb. Now look. You can't tell me, listen, you cannot tell me, and I'm not condemning them, and I'm not, I've been there smoking the dope, but once I got saved, he delivered me. Thank you for that, Lord. And I don't condemn anybody that's stuck there, but listen, your flesh will gravitate to anything you can grab to that'll justify it, okay? And, and that dope, and they're smoking it, I can almost guarantee that everyone that's truly born again, the Lord tried to convict them at some point. But if you go far enough into it, he'll quit telling you until you crash. Say, Lord, help me. 
to simply listen when you're trying to help me. For some, the damage is only slight. They're able to get on with their lives with the hurt causing only a minimum of irritation or inconvenience. For many more, they're harshly affected and stumble through life. They survive a relatively normal life, but fail to realize the full potential in their friendships, in their marriages, in their day-to-day -day relationships, and the full destiny that God has for them. Then there are those with extreme or severe damage to their spirit. These people are greatly incapacitated, dysfunctional, all manner of emotional, spiritual, physical, mental, relational, and financial disaster. They're forced to crawl or need to be carried through life. Have you met those who are struggling greatly? Is it you? Have you ever considered you have a broken heart? Have you met people, no matter how hard they try to walk, they seem to fall? One day they have faith and the next day no faith, full of doubt and unbelief it's because there's a broken heart and they cannot stand. Even when told to stand on the word and to quote God's promises, they cannot stand. When you have a broken heart, you have a hard time believing what God has done for you. The scriptures say you're accepted. You're a child of God, but you lose sight or never come into understanding of our inheritance. You cannot grasp fully your identity in Christ. Your thoughts are filtered through the negative life experiences, and you can be stuck in the pain of the past. For every thought that arises in your mind, there's a corresponding electrochemical reaction in your brain. Every time you think, chemicals flow. Your environment creates a mechanical input into your brain. What you see creates is mechanical, and it creates an electrical path that then creates chemicals to go into your body, out of your senses. Your environment creates a mechanical input, what you hear, what you see, what you smell, what you feel. Then the brain reacts according to your thoughts. Listen, positive thoughts release healthy chemicals. See, your body is like a pharmacy. Hear me? The body is like a pharmacy. Are you going to take good natural supplements or are you going to take the pharmacy of the world? As a man thinketh, so is he. But this is literally what happens to you physically. We're spirit, soul, and body, and there's no separating that. Okay? Listen, I can, I can just tell you, the anointing of God can come on a person for a given task, and God can use them in a mighty way, but I can tell you day in and day out, it's harder to walk in a high level, spiritual level when you're fighting your body, when your body's fighting you. It's harder. It's harder. Our sister, and I, you know, she, she's, she doesn't care. She knows I can talk about her. She's been fighting some physical battles. Now, you know why she's not losing? <laughs> because she's fighting. She's not losing because she knows the promises of God. And she's not going to lose because she's not going to sit and get an agreement with every demon that comes along and tells her you ought to just give up, blah, blah, blah. She knows she's going to heaven. She knows she has a promise here on earth, and she knows that she has something to fulfill here. Every one of us do. You've got to get the demons out of your mind. Hmm? You need your heart healed, right? But I would be remiss to tell you and teach you about getting a bro having broken hearts and what it does and all those things and cast the demons out and not tell you that you're not going to have to cultivate your thoughts to release good things. Your body will give you good things if you think good things. 
lupus, things like that, all of, all of those diseases where the body is consuming itself is because a person hates himself. It's self-hatred. And so the body gets in agreement with the mind and begins to attack itself. Because even if it's subconscious, but you don't really like yourself and you don't hate yourself, your body gets in agreement with you. Say, Lord, let that not be me. Help me think good thoughts towards me based on your word. Positive thoughts release healthy chemicals. Negative thoughts release unhealthy chemicals. They produce electromagnetic waves. At any one moment, your brain is creatively... Boy, this will tell you how amazing you are. Your brain is performing 400 billion actions, <laughs> of which you'll only be conscious of around 2,000. Each of these actions has, and then, and you don't even realize that the things, what you feel, what you feel, what's going on in my legs, my foot, my foot. You know, you know, I love it that we have uh, feet. You don't even realize you have feet till they get sore because you just walk on them. Uh huh. I told some mom, Jerry, some, I said, you know, only good thing about whacking your knee on something is that you got a knee to whack. Everything about it, when you hit it, hurts. But at least you can say, Lord, thank God I have a knee. <laughs> Amen. Each of the act, these actions has a chemical and electrical component. Emotions that regularly release a torrent of destructive chemicals will be the most damaging over time are these. Anger and rage. Resentment. Depression. Worry. Anxiety. Frustration fear, excessive greed, guilt, and shame. Research shows that 87% of illness can be attributed to our thought life and only 13% to diet, genetics, and environment. Medical science has directly linked emotions such as depression as a result of loss, hurt, betrayal to an increased risk of cancer and heart disease. When someone is hurting because of a broken heart, it's filtered through earlier negative events. You can quote the word of God on promises to someone, but they don't come. Why? Because the heart is broken. It's like a pail with holes in it. You keep trying to, the water gets poured in, it just leaks right out. Satan continually reminds you what others have done to you to keep you stuck in emotional pain. Many times a person with a broken heart has suffered from betrayal. It's like piercing your heart with a dagger and all the wind of life has let you. It left you. It can be like a sledgehammer blow to the chest. You can actually lose breath when someone betrays you, especially when it's someone you trust. The pain can seem unbearable. A person with a broken heart can end up with diseases. Many times this person is caught up on the performance wheel. Are you striving to prove to God, the world, and to yourself that you have value or worth? Are you trying to gain love and acceptance from parents and spouse, the boss, etc., by trying to always do right? And I'm telling you, the enemy is a bully. So if you're a rejected, brokenhearted person, he will make sure that people that normally would give you an girl or an boy don't. And then if you're getting them and you're doing good and you're and you're broken hearted like that, as soon as somebody brings you correction, you're either then then that person that's rejected and wounded and broken hearted will never take correction without rebuttal. They'll always have something to say back. And sometimes at their jobs, they'll leave from one job to another. They were doing so good and they were getting all the out of girls and out of boys, and then somebody brings correction and all of a sudden they weren't right to me. Bam, out of there. Because the devil is a thief. Have you shut down living in silent place of destructive isolation? Or is it both? Some diseases, heart disease, depression, multiple personality disorder, order, chronic bronchitis, extreme anxiety, insomnia, epilepsy, blood disease, allergies, chronic defeat, disease, uh, fatigue, asthma, food allergies, back pain, arthritis, restless leg syndrome. 
The Hebrew word translated broken is a strong word. It is shahbar. S-H-A-W-B-A-R. It means wrecked, shattered, crippled, maimed. Hebrew word for wounded is kahlaw. K-H-A-W-L-A-W. L, call law. It means to profane oneself, to defile oneself, to pollute oneself, to be ritually, sexually defiled, polluted, or desecrated. It means to violate the honor of or dishonor another. It means to violate a covenant. Lots of wounded hearts are come because of the covenant violations of God's people walking away from his covenant. If I walk away from his covenant, I hurt my wife. I hurt my children. I hurt everybody the Lord's ever blessed me to be able to help. Hmm? You know, sometimes when I'm under a battle, I just remember, I, I remember that he's blessed me to be able to help people. First of all, it has to center back on my love for him. But then do I want to hurt people by my own failure? No. No. We're fighting a good fight of faith here, right? Helping each other come to, you know. And, and for me, when I'm in a battle, if there's a battle going on that I'm in, I send out to trusted ones to pray. Because I know it's not all about me. So I humble myself. Do you get that? Huh? We need each other. But if you're wounded and you're broken and you're isolated, you will stay and you will not call on anybody else because whether you don't one more thing, you may be too prideful. You don't want somebody thinking you're weak. But yet the word says that there's power in agreement. I'll, I would rather overwhelm my enemy than scratch him a bit at a time. <laughs> I want help. Amen? Well, sometimes we got to quit worrying about what people think. The ones you can trust, listen to me. My dad had a saying, it wasn't necessarily biblical, but I think it's applicable. <laughs> and he's talking about people and life. And he said, your friends will love you anyway, and your enemies, it doesn't matter what you say. You know, this is the truth. So if you've got people that really are, are people that are trustable, that you, and you, God will send them. He will send them if you want them. If you want to hold away, you'll never have anybody. Let me tell you something. You'll never have anybody if you're, if you are walking in continual mistrust because of a broken heart. But if you ask God to send the right ones, he'll send the right ones that'll love you point you to righteousness you can share with them they can share with you we become stronger together but you have not because you ask not but but people that are afraid of being hurt again never ask they just walk in isolation a broken heart comes from life's devastation life's devastation is that god never wanted us to be trapped in he never wanted any of the things that happened to us as children to happen. It forms strongholds. You're not able to stand totally in faith, but how important is faith? We're told it's without faith, it's impossible to please God. We're supposed to meditate on the promises of God. With a broken heart, you'll be hindered and not able to stand in the faith. You'll have doubt and unbelief come into your mind. The father of lies will tell you you're rejected, you're unlovable. He'll pound pain on top of pain. The demons will say that even God doesn't love you. <laughs> they'll say, they'll cause people to question God. Why did this happen to me? Why this? Why? 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 I mean, listen to me. I may, it's okay to ask God something, but it's not okay to ask him with a finger pointed at him. Huh? 
it, so you see, because the lie in your mind says he's to blame, but he's the answer. It's the only answer. In, 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 in all honesty, with any doubt and any unbelief, that when you're questioning whether God loves you or not, you got to go back and look at the cross. If you've gotten away from what he paid, if you've gotten away from the price that your Lord paid for you, then, then the enemy has inroad into your mind. He so loved the world, the Father, so loved the world. He sent his only begotten son. What kind of love is that? It's an amazing love. Hebrews 10, 17 says, Their sins and their lawless deeds I remember no more. Say, Father, thank you that my sins and my lawless deeds you remember no more. See, I'm, I'm just telling you, you got to know that if you go to him and you confess your faults, he's just and faithful to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. That's the word of God. That's the truth. And if you don't believe that, you're going to be blown around by every wind and doctrine and everything that comes around. And you'll never stand on the solid rock. The solid rock isn't me and how good I behave. The solid rock is him and what he's done and his help for me to live a godly life and to clean me up when I mess it up. If you have anger, you can't get rid of. If you have fear, you can't get rid of. If you can't sleep at night, there's something wrong. There are some people called to do war. If you're up doing war because you're afraid of what might come in the night season, then you're not called to that. <laughs> God wakes you up to fight, so be it. If that's your call to wake up at third watch or whatever, two o'clock in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, whatever, get up and fight. If it's your calling. But if it's because you can't sleep because you're worried about what the demons are going to do, then they've already got you. You can, you can fight. You can get up and fight all night. doesn't matter. They've already got you. I always say, I mean, it's really sometimes very, very simple. Do the opposite. Listen, write it down if you need to write it down. Do the opposite of what the devil wants you to do. Just do the opposite. Whatever he wants, do the other. Because he's got, if you're doing what he wants you to do, he's got a puppet string up going, look what I'm doing to this one. Oh, look, look. I don't like demons playing with my life. Say, Lord, I forgive everyone for their verbal abuse, spiritual abuse, neglect, emotional abuse, for their conditional love, Loving others and excluding me. Putting me in between their conflicts. Being forced to be a caretaker when I shouldn't have been. Now look, if some of this applies to you, some of it may not, but it might have happened to your ancestors and you're still, you're reaping by the spiritual realm for people's inability say for people's inability to express love to me for witnessing violence alcohol substance abuse even being forced to participate for the constant criticism trivial criticism unjustified blame making me a scapegoat for their refusal to value me, for their refusal to affirm me, for their inconsistency, for unclear shifting and inconsistent boundaries, no boundaries, 
boundaries that are too tight. Boundaries that are too loose. For refusing to look me in the eye. Or giving me the evil eye. <laughs> for my parents not being in agreement and presenting two fronts, creating confusion, unkind words spoken to me and by my parents to each other for those that lied to me, those that abandoned me, those that betrayed me, falsely accused me, those that inflicted trauma on me, those that said, if you do this, I'll love you. If you do that, I'll love you. Creating performance, and a performance-based love system instead of just simple value. I forgive them for their sin against me. And I forgive myself for my own sin. A few scriptures and we'll pray and then we'll be done. Proverbs 12, 25, anxiety in the heart of man causes depression, but a good word makes it glad. A good word makes it glad. Proverbs 13, 12, hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when desire comes, it's the tree of life. How do you get a broken heart and feel hopeless for a long period of time? You, you be abused, neglected, conditionally loved, be misused, get into a hopeless situation. It creates spiritual trouble, hope deferred. You want something to happen and it don't. The way you have to, now listen, we're going to pray. We're going to cast out demons. We're going to pray for God to heal. But each and every person, no matter what and where you are and what God has set you free of, you will have to keep your freedom through resisting the enemy. Because he's going to come back and try to feed you. I always say he feeds you eggs. And if you'll quit eating scrambled eggs, he'll try fried. And if you quit eating fried, he'll try eggs benedict. And he'll whip you up an omelet. It's all eggs. All right, he's gonna present a little bit different front. He's gonna pray, but he's trying to see if you'll eat at his table. Don't eat at his table. A merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. A sound heart is life to the body, but envy is rottenness to the bones. Say, Lord, Lord. heal my bones, even as you're healing my spirit. Proverbs 15, 30, the light of the eyes rejoices the heart and a good report makes the bone healthy. A healed heart has a physically healthy body. So look, it's the thought. What report am I allowing to go into my mind? Is it a good report? Am I thinking good thoughts, producing things that bring healing and life? And then, or am I producing, am I thinking the negative thoughts? So even if I, even if I at the moment am not, feeling like it, I'm on top of the world, I need to speak the words that give God his glory, that acknowledge who he is, and I need to do battle by saying what God says, so that I come, even, even if I don't feel it, I am with the choice of the will, agreeing with God, so something can come forth that brings forth good fruit. Proverbs 15, 15, all the days of the afflicted of evil, but he who is of a merry heart has a continual feast. The heart of the wise, this is what I just said. Now hear it in the, hear it in the word. The heart of the wise teaches his mouth and adds learning to his lips. The person with a broken heart will be murmuring and miserable. They'll be talking lack of faith, doubt and fear, spiritual fear, doubt and unbelief, death. We want to talk life. 
Proverbs 25, 28, whoever has no rule over his spirit is like a city broken down without walls, meaning anything that can attack your city, like sickness in your body, sickness in your mind, means you don't have rule over your heart. But Isaiah 64 says they shall rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the ruined cities and the desolations of many generations. A happy heart makes the face cheerful, but heartache crushes the spirit. A merry heart does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. That Your immune system will be weak. We're going to do this quickly. Come here, baby. And we're not going to speak a bunch of words, but I'm Hold, hold on to my arm. I stand here right now as a man, as a father, as a brother, friend, anyone that ever hurt you, grandfather, and I ask you to forgive me. Just ask you to forgive me. Let me stand for whoever hurt you ex-husband, boyfriend, whether you're a man in this room or a woman in this room, or whatever that capacity is. Let me just say, I'm sorry. Let me just say, I'm sorry. Let me stand and tell you that your father in heaven would have rather none of that ever happened that he never forsook you and he never abandoned you and he loves you dearly and he wants to fix it. And if you'll receive that, I'm going to say I'm sorry that I showed you how to be angry. And I'm sorry that I showed you how to reject others. And I'm so sorry that I showed you how to turn my back on people. I ask you to forgive. And I ask you to let it go. I stand here as a mom, as a friend, as a grandmother, as a sister, as an aunt, a cousin, teacher, daughter. I stand here and I ask you to forgive me for ever hurting you. I'm sorry. I should have never hurt you. I should have never turned my back on you. I should have never been ugly to you, called you names. I should have never done that. I should have never betrayed you, talked about you. I should have never stolen from you, taken from you cheated on your husband I cheated on I should have never caused your husband to cheat I'm asking you to forgive me as a daughter I should have never been ugly to you and dishonored you but I was hurt and I'm asking you to forgive me I'm sorry as a mom that I didn't that I taught you how to hate men and how to do drugs and how to drink. I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry I didn't show you what a good mom is supposed to look like. I'm sorry I didn't make you feel safe and protected. I'm sorry I wasn't someone you could come to with your, with your hurts and your pains. Please forgive me. I love you. I know that if uh, your mom, your sister, any of the women, if they were in their right mind, they would have never done this. And I know that if they could, they would stand here and say, please forgive me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I hurt you. And I know the Father wants to heal your heart. He wants you whole. We live in a fallen world with a lot of hurt and pain, but it's not God's design for us to stay hurt. We get hurt, but we don't have to stay hurt. So I'm asking you to allow the Father to come in to all those places, all those wounded places in your life, 
uh, where all the cracks are, where all the where all the bleeding wounds are. I'm asking you to let him come in and heal them so that you can be everything God has made you to be whole, healed, so that you can fulfill the call in your life that the Father has for you. So I speak to your soul, your mind, your heart, and I say, be healed. Allow the Father to come in and pour his balm on you, the healing oil flowing from him into your lives. Don't leave here the same. Give it all up. Don't hold it back. Don't keep it. Open your heart and say, Father, repeat after me. Say, Father, I give you my pain. I give you my wounds. I give you everyone that's ever hurt me. I release them to you. I let them off my hook. I cut that hook off of them. And I thank you, Lord, that you will deal with them as you've dealt with me. Now, Lord, show me what it looks like to walk in freedom and allow me to walk that freedom out the way you've called me to walk. In Jesus' name, amen. As a married couple, just please let us stand right here. And if your parents weren't what they were supposed to be, nobody's perfect. But if their marriage did not reflect Jesus and his people, then just please forgive us. Forgive us. And ask the Lord to give you a new picture. Yes. Just ask him to give you a new picture of what it's supposed to be. Yes. If you're married in this room, you're married in this room. Ask the Lord to give you a new picture. And pray for healing in those areas. Yes. And we'll speak life. Amen. Amen. And we're not standing here as perfect. No. <laughs> no. But we're standing here as overcomers. Yes. Because of his grace. Amen. Amen. Sorry. Her dad kissed her and fire left. Oh, it does. <laughs> it's pretty staticky. And I said, well, thank you, Lord. Say, Lord, every spirit you want out, come out now. Broken hearted, wounded heart, shattered heart, bruised emotion. Come out now in Jesus' name. Take a deep breath. Let them go. Let them go. Come out of God's people. Come out. Come out. Broken heart, wounded heart, shattered heart, grief. Come on, grief and mourning. In the name of Jesus, hidden grief, long-standing grief. In the name of Jesus, come on, all that mourning, grief, mourning. In the name of Jesus, broken heart, wounded heart, shattered heart. Come out of their neurons in their brain. Come out of the neurons in their bowels. Come out of the neurons in their heart. Go, 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 go. Come on. Come on. You can't stay anymore. This is a new day. This is a new day. Come on. Come on. Say, Father, I give you permission to heal my heart. Broken by my mother, by my father, by my friends. Come, Holy Spirit, heal me, and I'll be healed. Say, Lord, I ask you to rewrite my DNA. Just rewrite me. Rewrite my programming. Send a new program. The program of accepted in the beloved. The program of adopted into the family of God. The program of accepting me, 
myself, me accepting me as fearfully and wonderfully made. Everyone stand up, if you will. For your spirit, soul, and body, say, Lord, wherever my spirit, man, has been bruised, has been battered, has been damaged, I'm asking you to fix my human spirit, to heal me. Take a deep breath. Receive the healing. Father, I speak to their spirit in the name of Jesus, their human spirits, and I say be made whole, be made, be made new in the Lord. They, they have the Holy Spirit within, but Lord, let that container, the human spirit, be repaired in the name of Yeshua. In the name of Jesus, fix them, Lord. Everywhere their spirit's been bruised, everywhere there's been hope deferred, all that hopelessness, get out. There is hope in the Lord. Every lion spirit that has battered their human spirit, bruised their human spirit, you go now in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus. Take a deep breath and receive it, receive it. Receive the Ruach, receive the breath of life, that his breath, that his life flow throughout your entire body in the name of Yeshua. Not only your body, your spirit, your soul, and your body be made whole in Yeshua's name. Take another deep breath. Take another deep breath. Say, Lord, heal me. I receive it. Deliver me, and I'll be delivered. I receive it today, and I give you glory for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. Now, Lord, I really need to learn and change. And part of that change will be resisting the enemy when the liar comes with his fiery darts that tries to take me away from your love, tries to hide me from your love. You're always sending it. But when the liar comes, I want to resist him. So anything that blocks me from resisting the liar I now command to go, even passivity in the name of Jesus. Now just cough for me. Come on, get out, all of him. All of that passivity, get out of them. All you squatters, get out of there. Everything that causes God's people to just roll over, just roll over and let the enemy run them over and lie to them and suck them down into the pit. Get out, get out, get out, get out. In the name of Jesus, all charismatic witchcraft, I break your power. In the name of Jesus, come on, go, 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 go. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. These are God's children. They belong to the Most High. They will never be the same. They're going to walk with you. They're going to hear from you. They're going to know your will. And they're going to hear and obey, and they're going to love you, and they're going to love e each other, they're going to love people, and they're going to love themselves. Say, I receive me today as lovable. <laughs> I'm lovable. I am lovable. I am acceptable. And I'm not rejected. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I bless your people. I thank you for them. I thank you for allowing me to stand here, Lord, and to speak. And Lord, I just speak life into them. I speak wholeness, and I speak victory, victory, victory. We sang the song, Victory in Jesus. We are, you always cause the saints to triumph. I speak them triumphant even in the days and times to come. And I speak them in, in intimate awareness that you are there no matter what it feels like. Come on, no matter what, you're there, Lord. Say you're there and you care. I receive that. I receive the blessing of Abraham to do what you've called me to do in the year to come, to be 
who you've called me to be, which is simply to be your child and reflect you. I receive all that you have and I receive your forgiveness for everything I've done and even anything I do in the future. Your blood is enough for me. Wash me in your blood. Everybody put your hand on your head. Say, wash my mind, Lord, with the blood of the lamb. Put your hand on your heart. Wash my mind, Lord. My, wash my heart with the blood of the lamb. Put your hand on your belly. Wash my bowels with the blood of the lamb. Thank you, Lord, for this life you've given me. I look forward to what you're going to do in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I pray for God's people as they travel. Thank you for this camp, what you've done, Lord. We give you glory and honor and praise. You're a good God. You're a good father. We glorify you. We honor you. We thank you. And let's just give him some glory. Thank you, Father, for what you've done. Come on. Thank you, Lord. You've got more for us. You're a good God. We can count on you. We love you, Lord. We bless you in Jesus' name. Father, keep them safe as they travel. And let there be sweet fellowship. And we do bind, gag, and blind the enemy and all watchers and monitors and all backlash and retaliation. And just thank you, Lord, that your children will be wise as serpents and harmless as doves, and they shall take up the weapons of their warfare whenever needed. And the greatest weapon will be loving you and receiving your love. In Jesus' name, amen.